G.I. Joe, a real American hero, is one of the most impressive run-and-gun action games for the NES. Imagine a game like Contra, but instead of being killed in a single hit, you have a life bar and can swap between three different characters at any time. You'll blast your way across the world, commandeering vehicles, demolishing enemy bases, and battling numerous bosses. G.I. Joe was published by Taxan USA, which was the North American division of a Japanese corporation called the Kaga Electronic Company, which back in the 1980s was mostly in the business of selling computer monitors. The U.S. division was established in 1981, but it wasn't until 1989 that they began publishing games for the NES, starting with Star Soldier, and then later, Mappy Land, Eight Eyes, and Magician. G.I. Joe was Taxan's only game based on a larger licensed property, and sadly, it would be the last game that they ever published. The game was mostly based on the 1989 G.I. Joe A Real American Hero animated series, not to be confused with the 1983 series that has the exact same name. It was that 1983 series that included the famous Knowing is Half the Battle PSAs, and by 1989, they weren't doing that anymore. It was just a pure action commercial for toys where lots of bullets were fired, but nobody died. In the game, you can control many of the popular characters from the show, including Snake Eyes, Duke, General Hawk, Captain Gridiron, and Rock and Roll. You'll also get Blizzard, who probably has at least a dozen fans out there. You'll fight against the agents of Cobra, with many villains from both the TV show and the toy line represented. Unlike in the animated series, you'll shoot to kill these terrorists and put a definitive end to their evil schemes. The game was produced by a young Ken Lobb who was working at Taxan at the time. He wasn't very famous back in 1991, but he would later get a job working for Nintendo of America where he was involved in many of their collaborations with Rare, including Killer Instinct and GoldenEye 007. There's even a gun in GoldenEye that was named the Clob as a tribute to Ken Lob. Lob worked with Japanese development studio Kindle Imagine Develop, usually just called Kid. Kid made some of the most technically impressive games for the NES and Famicom, including Low G Man, and Rekka Summer Carnival 92. For G.I. Joe, Kid created a game that controls well and has lots of animation in the backgrounds, which makes the levels feel alive. The game received positive reviews when it released in January of 1991. While it sold well, the G.I. Joe action figures and cartoons weren't as popular outside of the U.S., so they never released the game internationally. Although the game was a success in many ways, it didn't prevent the Kaga Electronics Company from closing Taxan later that year. Taxan may have closed, but that didn't prevent Kid from developing a sequel called G.I. Joe The Atlantis Factor, which this time was published by Capcom. In modern times, players still appreciate G.I. Joe for its exciting gameplay. It did not appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, but if you're a fan of side-scrolling action games, this one should not be missed. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The Cobra base areas are gigantic mazes that can have you running in circles, and if one of your characters dies, they will be available for the next mission, but they lose their valuable upgrades. It's devastating. But what if I told you where to find tons of hidden power-ups and vehicles that'll make these missions seem easy? What if I told you where to place every bomb so you can easily navigate the game's most difficult mazes? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? 
Even Cobra Commander himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Before we get started, this game does have a password feature, and right now I'm entering a secret password that will take you to a hidden sound test. But let's talk about passwords very quickly. This is not a super long game, so you can beat it in a single sitting without using the passwords, but you should still write down your password or take a picture of it at the end of each mission, because if all of your characters die, you'll be given the option to continue, but the three characters that you lost will lose all of their gun power-ups, and that's a total disaster. You'll want to reset and re-enter your password if that happens. So here's that sound test. The top line is for background music. Some of the numbers don't have any music on them, so just skip over those ones, and the bottom one is sound effects. All right, let's jump into the actual game. At the beginning of each mission, we'll see a message from our leader, General Hawk, where he'll introduce the mission at hand. Each mission has a fairly similar structure to it, with the exception of the final mission. In the first part, we'll go through a short stage where we'll defeat some enemies and fight a boss. In the second part, that's where we enter the Cobra base and we'll need to place some bombs. And the third part is the escape, where we'll need to run out of that base before it explodes. In this part, we'll choose our team. Snake Eyes is very important for the first mission. He has the best jumping ability, and there are some power-ups we're not going to be able to reach unless we have Snake Eyes on our team. For our third character, we chose Rock and Roll. He has the best gun in the game, but he can't jump very high, so what we're going to do is have Snake Eyes jump up near this pistol and then switch over to Rock and Roll so that he can collect it. For each one of those pistols that you pick up, your character will gain one-fourth of a level. So they start at 1A, and then you'll go to 1B, then 1C, so he's at 1B right now, but when we jump using Snake Eyes and switch over to Rock and Roll, that's going to take him to 1C, and there's also some hidden gun power-ups behind the trees and the forested areas, so make sure to jump around in there and get those. And there's another one right up here, so you can see we have level 1 gun right now, we're at 1D, but whenever we collect this, it's going to take him up to level 2, and we'll see a noticeable improvement. Now we're shooting 3 projectiles instead of 2. The highest level that you can get for your gun is level 4, at which point it will display max. And whenever Rock and Roll gets to max gun, he's going to shoot 5 projectiles, which is why he is so good. It's like he has the spread gun from Contra. Make sure to collect the items that are behind the trees here, and you can duck down to avoid the shots from these enemies. If you're ducking, they will not be able to shoot you. Do not miss this chevron item hidden in the palm trees. You'll need to use snake eyes to get it. Each chevron that a character collects will give them an additional bar of health, and you'll be able to collect up to three chevrons for each character. We're trying to power up rock and roll first because he's going to be very good against the bosses, but for the first form of this first boss, we want to switch to Snake Eyes. Make sure he has his melee attack on, and while you hold up, you'll be able to throw grenades. You can do that with any character, but it's very good with Snake Eyes. He throws them fast. For the second form of the boss, we're going to switch over to Rock and Roll and use his very powerful gun. You can press Select to switch between gun and melee weapon. You'll start on the right side and turn left, and then you'll just go back to the left and shoot right. And that brings us over to Mission 1-2. This is our first Cobra base. If you jump up and shoot downwards at the beginning of this mission, we're going to find a hidden K-Ration. 
so you can feed that to any of your characters that have low health to get them back up to full. We're still trying to get Rock and Roll up to his max gun level, but in part two of any mission, we need to find those check marks so that we can place a bomb. There's only two bombs that we need to place here in mission 1-2, but there are a number of gun power-ups that we want to find, so we'll take the time to do that so that we're going to be a lot more powerful in the later levels. These gun power-ups will carry through with us for the entire game, assuming that our characters don't die. There are no bombs to dispose of in the upper right corner here, but there are a lot more power-ups to find. We can drop into this radioactive liquid, it's actually safe, and then drop down through the floor by pressing down an A, and we'll just punch through these rocks and we'll be able to find two more gun power-ups. You could drop through the floor here to head towards the end of the mission, but we actually want to head back the way that we came because there are more power-ups to find. We'll switch to Snake Eyes for his enhanced jumping ability, but we're going to switch back to Rock and Roll because there's another gun power-up to pick up here, and we're very close to maxing him out. If we head over here to the left, you can see where the last check mark is, but we don't need to do that just yet. It's right by the exit door anyway, so we're going to be coming back this way. Instead, we're going to head over here, watch out for that crusher, and collect another chevron, and then over here on the left, we're going to be able to get the last gun power up that we need to max out Rock and Roll. Once we grab this, we'll see that Rock and Roll has reached level max and is very powerful. So now all we need to do is place the last bomb. If you're looking for the bombs on the map, you want to look for the ones that have a number 1 on them. The bombs that have a 2 and a 3 are for the second and third quest, which you'll reach after you beat the game. So just look for the bombs that are labeled 1, and once they're all placed, you'll be able to enter the boss's door and fight Raptor. Raptor is very easy to defeat with a fully powered up rock and roll. Just get underneath him, hold up, and shoot rapidly. Don't shoot to the left or the right or you might destroy those platforms that you're standing on. You don't want to fall down below. And that brings us to Mission 1-3, The Escape. This is the final part of Mission 1. We had to bring Duke on this mission because he was the mandatory mission leader, but we do want to take this opportunity to power him up. He's not a bad character. The best thing about Duke is that he's well balanced and has a ton of health, and having a ton of health is pretty good in a game where you can swap characters. You can see that you can go up through the ceiling in this area where you'll find a hidden helicopter and you'll also find a gun power up and the third and final chevron that we need for rock and roll so that'll max out his health. We switched back to Duke and you don't want to lose this helicopter, it can take four hits. You can shoot as much as you want, it does not use up ammo. So just try to stay kind of under the platforms that have the crushers and you should be able to ride it to the end. If you lose the helicopter, just try to get out of the radioactive water and head over here to the end. And this is the boss, the Range Viper. We're going to switch over to Rock and Roll to use his fully powered gun, and you just want to stay close to Range Viper. If you're next to him, his missiles will go over your head. Just don't get too close. If you're practically touching the guy, your bullets will actually go through him and miss. And once you've hit him with a few shots, he'll go down. And that's the end of Mission 1. Only five more missions to go. In Mission 2, we're headed to Antarctica, and that means we're going to have to choose Blizzard as our team leader. We don't have a choice in the matter. Blizzard is by far the worst character in this game. He doesn't have anything that he does better than any other character, so we're going to take Captain Gridiron and Rock and Roll. We're taking Captain Gridiron so that we can spend some time making him more powerful, since we don't want to waste a lot of power-ups on Blizzard, somebody that we're never going to pick after Mission 2. You can see that his melee attack is nothing special, and his gun attack has sort of a waviness to it. Whenever you power it up fully, sometimes it'll actually wave over the enemies, which is very annoying. He does have a decent amount of health, so there's that. We're going to switch over to a better character, Captain Gridiron, 
and we can go through the right side of some of these ice formations. Inside those, you're going to find more gun power-ups. It is possible to power up Blizzard and all of the characters fully, but it's a lot easier to just ignore Blizzard for the most part and just use him to soak up some damage in certain areas and then just switch off of him when there's power-ups to collect. I'm not sure why they chose to include Blizzard instead of Snowjob, who seems like a much more popular character. The only things I could think of is that they thought Snowjob looked too similar to Rock and Roll because they both have beards. Or maybe they just thought that Snow sounded too much like Blow and they didn't want to go there. Well, it's time for the boss. Captain Gridiron has a very good melee attack, so if you wait for this guy to stop moving, you can easily punch out the missiles on the right side. If you take out two of them, this thing won't be able to damage you if you stay on the far right side. So we'll just switch over to rock and roll, and we'll be able to easily hose down the other missile launchers. Once they're all destroyed, the Cobra Sea Ray will be no more. I think either me or my brother had this toy. We didn't have a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles, they were kind of expensive, but I definitely remember having that one. Mission 2-2 is another one of those bases where we're going to need to place our bombs. Remember, if you're looking at the map, you're looking for the bombs that have a 1 on them because this is the first quest. And right here at the very beginning, you can go down through the platforms and find a hidden helicopter. This will make things a lot easier, especially hitting this bomb location all the way up here in the upper left corner. You are timed in these stages and you can see the timer whenever you place the bomb, but if you know where you're going, you should have ample time to get through these stages. It's only if you're confused and wandering around that it becomes a problem. Make sure to go up through that wall so that you can get another gun power up. We're still trying to get Captain Gridiron to the max, and it should be no problem to do that here in Mission 2. Captain Gridiron has a lot of health, a spectacular melee attack, a good jump ability, not as good as Snake Eyes, but still very good, and a pretty powerful weapon. So I would say that although Duke is considered to be the well-rounded character, Captain Gridiron is not only well-rounded, he also gets to be exceptional in a few areas, so he's one of the best characters. Rock and Roll has that extremely powerful gun, but he's limited in a lot of ways. Captain Gridiron is powerful in almost every respect. Over here in the lower right corner, we'll be able to get a ton of power-ups, and there's a bomb that we need to place. We need to do three bombs in this mission, and the number of bombs will increase as we move forward. So two down, one more bomb to go. The last bomb in here is located near the exit, so we're going to start making our way to the upper right corner. But first, we can head down here, where we'll find another hidden helicopter. Pretty nice. With this helicopter, we'll easily be able to get to the final bomb. We need to go through this wall underneath the conveyor belt to get over here. And once you place the bomb, head back the same way that you came, and we'll grab a quick chevron before we hit the exit. The boss here is three Cobra Buzz Boars, and they always start out by going counterclockwise, so I like to run over to the right corner, turn left, and get some easy hits in. I'm using Captain Gridiron here because he can jump higher than Rock and Roll, which makes it easier to avoid the Buzz Boars, but if you can shoot at the word danger enough times, a buzz bore will drop that you can ride, and you can use that to deal some damage to the bosses. You may even be able to clear them using it. Once they're defeated, it'll be time for the final part of Mission 2, the escape. We're going to start out by using Blizzard here, so that if he takes any damage, that's not as big of a deal as if our other characters took damage. We want to save them for the boss. You'll notice if you look at the map, that you can actually head to the left from the starting, and there's a hidden Cobra Buzz Bore that we can find over there. Be careful not to fall into any pits, that would be instant death. The Cobra Buzz Bore is not the easiest thing to control, so try to get a feel for it. You can jump over to other platforms and cling to them, and the shots that you shoot rotate around your vehicle. 
You have unlimited ammo in the buzz bore, so you want to clear a lot of these enemies, and then rotate around the platforms to collect all the power-ups. We're collecting some for Blizzard now because we've maxed out Captain Gridiron and Rock and Roll. So I guess there's no harm in getting a few levels for Blizzard, but once you get to the boss, we're going to switch over to Rock and Roll. We've been saving his health for a reason. This is Metalhead. Metalhead always comes from the right side, so get ready to shoot at him as soon as he appears. He's hard to avoid when he comes from the wall, so just let him hit you, and then as he flies above, you're gonna shoot upwards, and then he'll land on the right and you'll be able to shoot him a few more times and finish him off. And that's the end of Mission 2. Nice work. Mission 3 is the New York City sewer system, and our team leader is Snake Eyes this time, so we won't have to bring any bad characters with us. In fact, we can assemble the dream team of Snake Eyes, Captain Gridiron, and Rock and Roll. Mission 3-1 is very different from any of the missions we've played so far. It's an auto-scrolling level that moves downwards. You don't want to get stuck between any of the platforms and the ceiling whenever it scrolls up there. That would be instant death, so you need to stay towards the middle of the screen. I like to use Snake Eyes here, he has a good melee attack. We can just move to where the enemies are, you'll see them coming up below you. And just quickly kill them with your melee attack. There are no hidden items in this stage but sometimes the enemies drop items, so that's another good reason to play as Snake Eyes here. We do want to get him powered up, although his melee attack is arguably better than his projectile attack. But Snake Eyes' gun does have a cool property. It doesn't use up ammo, so it's completely free. It may not have the power level of Rock and Roll Spread Gun, but not using up ammo does make it useful. Move to where you'll be next to where the enemies are going to appear. Attack them with your melee attack. And when you see this big opening in the middle of the sewer, that's where the boss is going to appear. This is the Cobra Fang 2. You can attack it by standing beside the Cobra Fang 2 and using your grenades. But the safest way to fight this guy is to get on either side, switch to rock and roll, and just keep shooting it while jumping into the air. You don't want to be underneath the Cobra Fang 2 or it'll drop all of its missiles on you, so you definitely want to attack that guy from the side. Mission 3-2 is the largest Cobra base yet, and we'll need to place five bombs this time. There's a hidden Cobra buzz bore at the very beginning. You want to jump up and take out that enemy and then get up onto this platform move over to the edge, and using Rock and Roll's weak jump, you should be able to make it up in there. Using a more powerful jump seems to make it harder, so make sure that you get all the way to the edge before you jump, and use Rock and Roll to jump up into the area where you'll find the hidden buzz bore. Up at the top, we can grab another gun power up, and then head down this way, where we'll find our first bomb. From here, we're going to go to the area up above where the bomb is, and there's a hidden chevron power-up that we can find there. However, we can't break through the wall using the Cobra Buzz Bore, so we're going to need to press Select to get rid of it. It's unfortunate, but it served its purpose, and there is another vehicle that we'll be able to find in this base. You'll want to punch through this wall, and we'll be able to grab that chevron, which we can use to help max out Snake Eyes' health. After grabbing that chevron, we're going to head back towards the starting point, and you'll see that these rough brick walls, you can actually climb those. So you want to jump at them and hold the jump button, and then you can just keep climbing up, and that'll help you get back. Before we had the Cobra Buzz Bore, and that makes it very easy to climb walls, but you're going to need to use those rough patches when you don't have the Buzz Bore. Down here, we're going to be able to collect a K-Ration if you need it, that will refill your health to the max. So if any of your characters are damaged, you can pick that up, or you may want to save it if they're all at full health or close. Down here, we'll be able to place another bomb, so that's our second of five. Three more to go. If you're looking at the map, you're looking for the bombs that have a one on them, 
or have a 1.2. In that case, that means that the bomb is in the same place in both the first and second quest. So you're just looking for any bombs that have a 1 on them anywhere. That's where you're going to find them. Over here, we can hack through another wall to get another chevron, bringing Snake Eyes very close to full health. Down below where that chevron is, if you clear this turret, you can find another gun power-up hidden inside of the wall, and then we're going to make our way back through this long corridor, which will lead us to the starting point once again. So carefully make your way through here, use your melee attack if you want to conserve bullets, although if you want to switch to Snake Eyes' gun, it doesn't actually use the bullets, but the melee attack is a bit more powerful. Up here, we can use Rock and Roll to quickly take out that enemy, and then we'll head back up onto this level. Above us here, we can grab another gun power-up, which will bring Snake Eyes finally to gun level 2, and you can see his shot has two bullets on it now instead of just the one, and it still doesn't use up any ammo. Head down here, and we're going to make our way across this upper hallway, so just head all the way to the left. Heading down this hallway is optional, but we'll be able to find a health refill and more ammo. Something that you should know about ammo is at the end of each section of each mission, if you have fewer than 150 bullets, the game will refill you to 150, but if you have more than 150 bullets, you'll be able to keep whatever you have. So keep that in mind, if you have less than 150, then you can go hog wild at the end of a mission because you're just going to get refilled. But if you have a decent amount more, you may want to protect that ammo so that you can keep it through to the next stage. This hallway will take us to where we need to place the next bomb, but it will also take us to another hidden Cobra buzz bore, which will make placing the last few bombs a lot easier. Once you have the buzz bore, you want to go back through the same hallway that we were in before and take it down to the bottom. And then we're going to head over here to the right where we'll be able to find some more health. And if we go all the way back over here to the left, we'll be able to get a ton of power-ups. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Just go through the area below it. And here's where we'll be able to place that third bomb. From here, we're just going to go back the same way that we came. Use your weapons to take out some enemies. You can take them out through the walls, but remember, if they go off the screen, they are going to respawn. Using the buzz bore, it should be pretty easy to climb up here, although if you do lose it, you just have to make do with whichever characters you still have. Once you've placed the fourth bomb, you want to head back and, well, we lost the buzz bore, but we want to take this middle path. It's right underneath the one that we were just in to place the fourth bomb. Carefully avoid those turrets. Up here, you can collect an invincibility vest. That'll make this next part a bit easier. And we're just going to head through here to the right where we're going to find the fifth and final bomb. Once you've placed that bomb, we're just going to head back to the left and getting to the exit won't be that difficult. So carefully make your way through here. Remember that some of those enemies are going to drop off of the ceiling. It's okay to use Snake Eyes here. We're not going to be using him on the boss. So we want to save our other characters for the boss fight up ahead. So just head here across the top to the upper left corner and drop down. And here's the boss, the AI computer. Falling into those gaps is instant death, and you don't want to get grabbed by the claw, so the safest place to be is on the far left. If the AI comp comes all the way out like this, you can just aim up and shoot at it, and you'll be able to get some easy hits. If it's over on the right side, well then just jump and shoot it from the left. In any case, stay on the left side, and you should have no problem defeating that boss. And that brings us to the final part of Mission 3. At the end of this, we'll have to fight the Overlord, but first we'll need to go through this escape route. You can see that there's a new vehicle in the upper left corner, the Cobra Pogo, but how do we get up there to collect it? Well, we can go through the wall here to get all of these items, and that's the last chevron that we needed for Snake Eyes, so he has a full health bar now, which is great. There's some conveyor belts down here. We can use his free projectiles to take out those turrets, 
and if you shoot through the wall on the right side, that's how you get back to where that pogo vehicle is. We haven't seen the pogo yet, but it's one of the better vehicles in the game. So head all the way back over here, and once you're in the pogo, you can press down and the jump button to go through that platform and drop down below, but I like to walk all the way over to the right first. This vehicle can jump very high, and whenever you shoot its weapon, it launches projectiles in nine different directions, although none of them go downwards. Unlike the buzz bore, these projectiles can actually destroy sections of wall, so you can use it to clear the way forward. Up here we can grab an invincibility vest, which does apply to vehicles. And we want to carefully make our way across, although it's harder for the pogo to fall into some of these smaller gaps. You just kind of push to the right there, and you'll be able to easily walk over those holes. Falling into the gaps in this stage is instant death, but the pogo will make it much safer. You'll need to be a lot more careful once you lose it, but hopefully it can bring you close to the end of the stage, and that's what's happened here. There's a few of these birds, you don't want them to knock you into a hole but we just need to get a little bit farther. And here we are, this is the boss, Overlord. And you can see what Snake Eyes' max level weapon does, but I like Captain Gridiron against this boss, mostly because he has a ton of health. Whenever the Overlord is joined together, you wanna kneel down and shoot at him, but you can see that when he's separated, he's invulnerable, so you just wanna try to avoid him during that time. Watch your health bar, switch to a different character if you get low, and it should not be hard to defeat this boss. And that's it. We've completed mission three. Now we're halfway through the game. Mission four is the Black Hills, and this is Captain Gridiron's mission. While the previous mission had us slowly scrolling downwards, in this mission, we're going to be doing a vertical climb. We can pick Rock and Roll, and we'll take Duke with us as well this time so that we can finish powering him up. Having a character that has as much health as Duke could be very useful in the final missions, so we do want to get him his top level gun. Unlike the first part of Mission 3, there's actually a lot of power-ups here in Mission 4. Watch out for the Cobra Copters and the other enemies that come down on you in this area, but the good thing about playing as Duke and trying to power him up is, well, he has a ton of health, so if you take some damage, it's not all that big of a deal. His gun shoots some ring-type projectiles, and they're not as good as the ones that Rock and Roll or Captain Gridiron shoots, but they are pretty good, so we do want to get him powered up to the maximum level, and we're pretty close right now with level 3C. Up here we can grab a chevron to increase Duke's health, and then we can go through the wall and press down in the jump button to drop through where we'll find a hidden pogo. Using this pogo will make the remainder of mission 4-1 pretty easy, and if you can manage to take it to where the boss is, this is one of the few opportunities in the game where you can actually bring your vehicle into the boss fight. So here's the boss right up here, the AGP, and if you still have the pogo, you just want to get underneath it where you'll be able to hammer it with three shots at a time, and you'll be able to finish this boss off very quickly with the pogo. If you did lose it before you got to the boss, well then you can try to get underneath it and use your grenades, or switch over to one of your heavy hitters and try to position yourself in such a way so that your entire fan of bullets is hitting the boss. Those heat-seeking missiles can be annoying though, you'll want to try to keep moving and jumping around to avoid them. Mission 4-2 is another Cobra base, but this one has a different feel than the others do. Much like everything else here in Mission 4, this base is taller than it is wide. At the very starting, you can just drop down below where you'll find another chevron, and the last gun power-up that we needed to bring Duke to his maximum level. If we continue dropping down, we'll be able to find our first bomb. Five more to go. If you punch through the wall over here, there's another gun power-up. We are fully powered up right now, but if you need another gun power-up because your characters are not maxed out, then make sure to punch through and grab that. There's also some ammo in there. The next thing that we want to do is head down here to the lower right corner 
where we can shoot through the ground and find a hidden Cobra Buzz Bore. This is going to make this part a lot easier. There's some more ammo and another gun power up that we don't need up above there. And you'll want to just avoid these flamethrowers. Try to keep your health high on the buzz bore. It only can take so many hits before it's destroyed and we're going to want to use its climbing power. That's going to make this a lot easier. Once you place that bomb at the very bottom, we're going to climb up the left side where we'll find more power ups and another bomb. Wait for the fires. And we placed our third bomb. You can go through a lot of the walls here. That's how you'll find some of these power-ups. We're fully powered up right now, but if you need to top off any of your characters, you should be able to max out pretty much anyone you have left in this mission. So we're just going to work our way up the left side, and that will finish off the bottom half of this base. And we just need to find the bombs in the top half and then we can work our way to the boss door. The boss door is in the upper right corner, but it's not at the very top. You actually have to go from the middle and climb up there. So we're taking the upper left path right now. That will take you to this bomb. Once you have it, you're going to climb back down. You can see over to the right there's another check mark. That's actually the last bomb we're going to place. We need to make our way all the way to the very upper left corner where we're going to find the fifth bomb, and this is a bomb that's always in the same place no matter which quest you're on. It's the only bomb in the game that's like that. So blast through these walls, be careful of the enemies, and just keep shooting through and you'll make your way to bomb number five. From here, we want to make our way back to the starting point. That's where we're going to find the last bomb. And if you head over here to the right, you can see where the exit is. There's a power up right above it. It includes a flashing pink K ration, which will fill up your health. So you may want to stop over there to get that, even if you have maxed out gun levels. Over here, we can drop through this platform and then we can drop through another platform. And that takes you back to the starting and we're going to head over here where we can climb up and find the final bomb. With bomb number six placed, we just need to climb out of here, which can be easier said than done. You'll want to climb up this wall here on the left, so use that to get up higher. You may want to take out some of these enemies, because if you get hit by those enemies, they can knock you down and then you'll have to climb up again. So try to take these guys out. Grab this wall, jump over, take out this flamethrower guy, and then carefully make your way up to the exit. The boss here is the Road Pig, and this is one of the more challenging bosses in the game. Carefully make your way up the conveyor belts. If you fall in the gap below, that's instant death. And then you want to just keep jumping over here on this left conveyor belt. You won't take too much damage from the rocks, and Captain Gridiron has a lot of health to work with, but Watch his health bar. If it gets low, you can switch over to dupe. Just keep jumping from here. You don't want to come in contact with the boss himself. That will deal you a lot of damage. The rocks that he throws, they don't deal as much. After defeating the road pig, it brings us to mission 4-3, which is one of the easier escape missions in the game, if you know the trick. You'll want to clear out these turrets, and then you can see that we've already destroyed some of the wall on the right side. Well, if you go into there and you drop through a few platforms, you can find a hidden helicopter. And this helicopter is going to make things way easier. We don't need any of these gun power-ups, so we're just going to quickly work our way to the top, shoot any enemies in your way, grab that chevron if you need it, and you should easily be able to get to this exit in no time. The boss here is Voltar. You'll want to get on his level and just keep shooting him. Watch the laser turrets on the side. They'll light up before they're about to fire and you can get out of the way if you're on that same level. He can attack you with that bird as well, but it shouldn't take long to defeat Voltar if your characters have maxed out power. And that's the end of mission four. Only two more missions to go, but when we come back to headquarters, we find out that General Hawk has been kidnapped, and it's time for Rock and Roll to lead a team into the Sahara Desert. 
For mission five, I like to bring a team that includes Captain Gridiron and Duke because Rock and Roll, our team leader, has the lowest health in the game, so we're going to compensate for that by taking the two characters that have the most health. Feel free to bring Snake Eyes if you prefer over Duke, but we won't need his enhanced jumping abilities very much in this mission. Here at the beginning of Mission 5, you can go into some of these sand dunes to find some power-ups, but right now, all of our characters have maximum guns, so unless somebody died in a previous mission, you won't need to do this. However, there are a lot of gun power-ups here if you need to max anyone out. We're going to fight a mini-boss at the beginning of this stage, so I have Duke on in case we take some damage. It won't be that big of a deal if Duke takes the damage. He has a lot of health to work with. And here's that attack copter. You need to take out all three turrets on it to make it go away. So get underneath it, shoot up using Duke or Rock and Roll, and you'll be able to quickly get rid of this copter, and it will fly back off to the left. Once the copter's out of the way, it's pretty easy to get to the end. Just keep making your way to the right until you see the sand flatten out. That'll be your cue that you're almost to the boss. Another gun power up here that we don't actually need. Watch out for the enemies that pop out of the sand. Just stay far back from them and shoot them with your gun. And here's where the sand levels off. Switch over to rock and roll. It's time to fight the cobra bug. The screen starts to scroll pretty quickly when you fight the cobra bug, so keep jumping to mitigate the effects of the scroll. You're going to have to take out the cannon that's on top, then the hatch in the middle, then there's a turret on top, and finally you'll have to finish off the driver. With Rock and Roll's enhanced gun, it shouldn't be too hard to do. If he does get low on health, make sure to switch over to Captain Gridiron, and be ready because Mission 5-2 is the biggest Cobra base yet. There are a lot of invisible walls that we'll need to pass through here, so once you start out, you want to head through to the right. We're not going to worry quite as much about picking up all the power-ups here in Mission 5-2 because our characters are already maxed out, but if anybody in your team is not maxed out because they died or something, then this will be a good opportunity to bring them back to the max. And that's where our first bomb is. Once you have it, head down below and go through the wall to the right. If we make our way around here and climb up this wall, we'll be able to find another bomb, so that's bomb number two, and we'll also be able to drop down through these platforms and pick up a Cobra Buzz Boar. Just like in many of the other bases in this game, our ability to use these hidden vehicles will make this one way easier. So once you have the buzz boar, you want to head back to where we placed the first bomb. Take out some enemies if you need to. Remember the buzz boar does shots that go around it, and it has unlimited ammo. You want to make your way all the way to the top above where that first bomb was, and here we'll find the third bomb. So that's all the bombs that we need to place in this section. We want to head back to the starting, and we went right whenever we started out. Once we get back to the starting point, we want to explore the area to the left. So here's that first wall that we went through. Now we're above the starting point, and we can go through the floor right here. And with the buzz bore, we can easily loop around and find this bomb. If you don't have the buzz bore, you can climb the wall on the right side. If you're getting low on health on your buzz bore, that's okay, because as you can see over here, after we get bomb number five, if we go up through the platform above it, we'll be able to find another vehicle. This time it's a helicopter. In my opinion, the helicopter is a lot better than the buzz bore. It's easier to control and it doesn't have to stick to the walls. It can just fly. This mission can be confusing because of all the walls you can pass through, but if you know where to find the vehicles, it's not actually that tough. Over here we can grab some more power-ups. We want to head over to the right, and we actually want to go down from here. So we're going to head down and to the right. We'll go through this wall. There's some more power-ups in here if you want them. Try to preserve your helicopter if you can. And watch out for these turrets that launch missiles. Well, we lost the chopper, but that's okay. We're pretty close to where the next bomb is. Head through this wall, and there it is. 
the sixth bomb. That's the last bomb over here, but there are a bunch of power-ups if you need them. The most important ones are probably that vest and the flashing K ration. But if you need another chevron, well, there's another one up here that you can grab. You can go through this wall in the middle of those two caution tape platforms. It's tricky to get in there, but that's how you get the invincibility vest as well as the health refill. So you probably will want to grab those and then make your way back to the left. So we're just making our way back the way we came, and once you get to this area, we want to climb up to the top. So just keep climbing in this area until you can't climb anymore, and then go through the wall to the left, and that's going to bring us to where the final bomb is. It's guarded by a bunch of these missile turrets, which is kind of annoying. Try to shoot them. They often drop items, so that part's nice. And that is the seventh and final bomb, and the boss door is directly above us. So we just want to backtrack a bit to the right. We need to go up through the ceiling here, and you can shoot through the wall to grab some more ammo and a health refill, in addition to a gun power up and a chevron if you need those. Once you have them, you're just going to head back to the left, and that will take you to the boss's door. This is Globulus. As the battle begins, you want to get over here on the right side and blast your way up through. You don't want to get caught by the scrolling screen, and you don't want to open up any gaps below you because if you fall through them, that would be instant death. Make your way up to this open part, and then carve a small hole in the upper right corner. Position Captain Gridiron up here and switch to your melee attack. Face the boss, rapidly press the B button, and keep tapping down. If you do it, the boss will come into your melee attack and take a ton of damage which will kill him very, very quickly. You could do this with some of your other team members, but Captain Gridiron has such a good melee attack that it will finish him off much faster than anyone else. And that brings us to mission 5-3. This is the most difficult escape mission in the game. We will have to fight Destro at the end as well, who may be the most difficult boss in the game. You'll need to be careful here that you don't fall through the gaps. That is instant death, but it's not as difficult as it may look. Just keep making your way slowly but surely across. Shoot any enemies that are in front of you. You don't want to get knocked back and end up falling into a pit. Typically, if you get knocked back, you'll fall onto a platform, but you'll want to do your best to take out any of these missile launching guys that are in front of you before you jump onto their platforms. Take out these turrets as you make your way across, clear another missile shooting guy, and just keep working your way to the right. You can use Captain Gridiron or Duke here, and if it looks like you're going to fall, you can grab onto a lot of the walls in this area, so don't let yourself fall into a hole. Do your best to grab onto a wall, and 9 times out of 10, it'll work. We're going to drop down here and make our way across to the right. A lot of enemies down here, so watch out for them. Keep shooting. We have a good bit of ammo, so we should not run out. Although, if we did run out before the boss here, we'd be in big trouble. We definitely need ammo to fight Destro. So, keep clearing these turrets. Here, we can clear this red guy by jumping and shooting downwards, or you can just try to get past him and hurry on to the right. Take out a few more enemies. And there is a flashing ration over there to the left, but we're doing pretty good. We want to make sure that Rock and Roll has full health, but the rest of our characters, we don't necessarily need to be at full health. So we're not going to risk it and head over there. We're just going to keep plowing ahead. When you get up here, I like to switch to a melee attack because there's a flying guy that's about to jump in and attack us. So just punch that flying guy as you move forward, and we'll be at the boss. This is Destro. For the first part of the fight, you just need to get underneath Destro's vehicle, hold up, and keep shooting. If you see it start to move downward, move out from underneath it and get ready to shoot it horizontally. Once Destro's out of his vehicle, though, that's when it gets tough. The screen starts scrolling, and if you fall into one of those gaps, it's instant death. Keep shooting to the right so you can hit Destro, and whenever you see him shoot a projectile, try to jump over that projectile and one of the gaps in the ground at the same time. 
you don't want to get hit out of the air and fall into a gap. Whenever you get into the sections that have a long part with no gaps, just keep shooting rapidly and it shouldn't take too much to finish off Destro. If one or two of your guys dies here, that's okay. It's alright to go into mission 6 with one or two guys that have lost some of their levels, but if your whole team gets wiped out, don't continue. You should start mission 5 over with your password. We get a brand new character for mission 6, General Hawk, and he is very awesome. General Hawk can fly. For our second team member, I'm going to choose Captain Gridiron, and for the third one, we'll pick Rock and Roll. You can pick pretty much whichever characters you want here. The most important thing about Mission 6 is that you keep General Hawk alive and try to power him up to his maximum gun level. The good news about Mission 6 is that there's only one segment to go through, but the bad news is that one segment is the biggest Cobra base in the game. At the very beginning, you want to head over to the right, shoot through the ground, and drop down. Make sure that you're picking up those gun power-ups for General Hawk. We want to get him up to the maximum level before the end. Also, you'll find the first bomb down there, so make sure to place that one, and then head back up to the starting point and start making your way over to the left. It may be a good idea to switch to some of your other characters when you're just moving around here in the base. Make sure to pick up all the gun power-ups as General Hawk, but you do not want him to die before the final boss. Cobra Commander is extremely difficult to beat without General Hawk. So after placing that second bomb, I'm going to switch over to Captain Gridiron. That way if he takes some damage, it's not as big of a deal as if General Hawk takes the damage. And we want to go down through this platform and head over to the left. Some of these guys that shoot missiles at you can be pretty annoying. Once you clear their missile launcher, they'll come running right at you. If you climb up here, we can shoot down through to get some more ammo and another gun upgrade for General Hawk. One good way to keep General Hawk safe is by using vehicles. So if we head straight across here, there's one of those annoying missile launcher guys. But over here, we'll find two gun power-ups and a hidden Cobra buzz bore, which will certainly be helpful. So we're going to take that buzz bore, try to be careful with it. It can only take three hits and it looks like we've already taken two. The buzz bore will make it easy to ride up here and get bomb number three in place. And then we're going to head down here to the lower left. You can see that there's another vehicle down there, a pogo. So whenever we run out this buzz bore, we are going to switch over to that. Right here we can shoot downwards to get another gun power up, and that brings General Hawk up to 3A. We only need a few more to get him to the max. Drop down here, shoot over to the left, and if we shoot through the ground here, there's where that hidden pogo is. We're hopefully going to be able to use this pogo to get through a lot of the lower part of the base without taking very much damage. Don't be afraid of wasting ammo, the pogo has unlimited shots and just keep working your way to the right. You may need to move back a bit so that your projectiles can clear some of the sections of the wall, and you'll want to jump over to the corner of that platform to make your way up here. Just keep working your way over to the right. There's some more power-ups above you there, so you'll want to pop into there and get those for General Hawk. A Chevron is nice. We certainly want to increase his health. And just keep working your way over here where we can find an invincibility vest which would be a very useful thing so that we can keep our vehicle protected. So just drop through, grab that vest, and continue to weave your way around. There's another cache of power-ups in the lower right corner. So make sure to grab those, especially the chevron that will increase General Hawk's maximum health, and then continue to work your way across to the left. Keep going, there's a lot of conveyor belts down here, so that's a little bit obnoxious. But once you get all the way over, we'll find the fourth bomb. And that's the last thing that we need to find in this section of the base. So we're going to backtrack out the same way that we came in. So just keep working your way across these conveyor belts. They'll be going with you now, so it'll be easier to cross them. Just keep heading over here to the left. You're going to drop down and shoot through the walls. If you've lost the pogo at this point, that's okay. Just do your best to conserve General Hawk's health. 
you may want to switch over to Captain Gridiron or Rock and Roll if you lose the pogo. Of course, Rock and Roll is not your best jumper, so Captain Gridiron could help you with some of the jumps, but if you need to do a very big jump, you will have to switch over to General Hawk so that he can use his flight ability. General Hawk's flight ability works very similar to the helicopters, so you can imagine how useful that can be. Grab some more power-ups, and we're going to head down here and go through this wall. Once you come across here, you'll be able to see where the next bomb is. So head through this corridor, and you can see the check mark down below. There is some ammo that we can grab right here, as well as an invincibility vest. So that'll keep General Hawk from taking some damage. And we'll make our way over to the check mark, and you can see that there are some more power-ups that we passed up, but we'll grab them on the way out, just in case we take some damage. So we'll head over here, and if he took any damage after the invincibility wore off, we will be able to get a pink ration here, in addition to some more power-ups for the general. And with that, we're going to head back out the same way that we came. And up here, we will find the seventh bomb. And that means we only need one more. Before we grab the last bomb, we can head up here where we'll find two more gun power-ups. And that brings General Hawk to the maximum level. He is very powerful now, and we are ready to fight Cobra Commander as soon as we clear that last bomb. So just head over here to the left, take out that guy stuck to the ceiling, and just keep working your way over. We're almost to the bomb, it's right down here. So go through that wall, and there it is, bomb number eight. Once you've placed the eighth bomb, you can just jump right up through here and head over to the right. We're going to make our way to the upper left corner. That is where the boss's room is. So cut straight across here to the left, Head up to this hallway. We want to go back over to the right, where we're going to go up into the next hallway above and go through the wall. So walk through that wall. And that's going to take us over here onto the left side of the map. So just keep plowing through, and when you get to this area, you're just going to fly straight up. Try to avoid the enemies. Just keep flying until you get to the top and head over to the right. Then you want to double back through the wall and just follow this hallway this will take you to the final boss. We'll see a little cutscene where we see Cobra Commander. And here he is. He's in snake form like he was at the end of the movie, so that's a nice little touch. And he gets transformed back into his reptilian humanoid form. And the best way to fight him is to try to fly right in front of his little chair. You don't want to touch that thing, it'll deal you a bunch of damage. Just keep bouncing up and shooting him rapidly with General Hawk. If General Hawk gets very low on health, or if he gets transformed into a lizard, you can switch to one of your other characters to finish this guy off, but if you don't have General Hawk, you're going to be in big trouble. Well, that's the end of the game, but before we get into the actual ending, there is a second and third quest in this game, so once you get to the end of the credit roll, you'll see this password screen with your score, and from here, it'll take you to the second quest. In the second quest, you can only bring two characters on missions, and the bombs are going to be in different places. Also, after you beat the second quest, you'll come here to the third quest, and in the third quest, you can still only bring two characters, but the enemies deal double damage, making it even harder. You'll definitely want to have General Hawk ready for Cobra Commander in the third quest. If you don't, I have no idea how you'd beat him with just one other character, that seems crazy. Use the same strategy, but just be aware, you take a lot more damage in the third quest. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten G.I. Joe, a real American hero. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. With a brief flash over the horizon, Cobra's final base is destroyed. Congratulations! Now I do have to say that we've been hearing this entire time that Cobra is this organization of terrorists, but we were the ones that have been sneaking around planting bombs and blowing up buildings, so... Who are the real terrorists here? 
In any case, the gratitude of the world is now yours, and the G.I. Joe team will live long in the memories of the peace-loving people of Earth. Roll the credits. As the final credits roll, we see a bunch of small scenes featuring the different bosses from the game, which certainly makes the credits a bit more fun to watch. This is the exact same ending that you would see if you finished the first or the second quest. The difference that you'll see is at the very end, where we'll get a special message from Ken Lobb. I think it's kind of cool that Ken Lobb signs this special message with his name, considering that he wasn't very famous when this game was made, but he would go on to do so many big things in the industry for Nintendo and Microsoft. I imagine that the closing of Taxan was a sad day for Ken Lobb, but it was probably a blessing in disguise for him. He was able to take all this experience that he gained publishing games in North America and use it to get that great job at Nintendo of America where he was involved in so many of the most exciting releases. Killer Instinct, Super Mario 64, GoldenEye 007. It's hard to think of what gaming would have been like without Ken Lobb. And while many of the games that Ken Lobb published while working at Taxan were already completely finished by another company in Japan, G.I. Joe A Real American Hero was one where he actually took an active involvement on the project. So this game was made in Japan by Kid, but Ken Lobb actually had a lot of involvement, especially since they were making a game specifically for the North American audience. One thing I will say about this game is that I do feel like the roster of playable characters has a lot of missed opportunities in it. Duke and Snake Eyes were good picks, but the rest of them, I would have chosen different characters. How about Roadblock or Shipwreck? Instead of Captain Gridiron, I would have much rather have seen Sergeant Slaughter, although maybe there was some sort of issue with wrestling that made them unable to choose him. How about including Scarlet or Lady J? The lineup of characters in this game is a major sausage fest, even on the Cobra side. Whenever you have multiple playable characters, it's nice for all of them to have a distinct look, and having a female character in there would help with that. All I know is if this game was made in modern times, they would have definitely chosen a different roster of characters, and it probably would have been for the better. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat G.I. Joe and put an end to the organization known as Cobra, at least for now. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because there will always be more fictitious wars to wage, and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.